are these people? I do believe. Do we have to talk about this? This bozo. Everyone's everyone's favorite. Uh, you know, we might have to talk about everyone's favorite. You know, apartheid diamond billionaire recipient. You know, um, but fun South African. Um, but we're gonna talk about free speech, which you think this guy may be giving you some, but I'm here to tell you, you don't got enough capital. So, um, this is from Jonathan K. Cook, one of those indie media award honoree peoples. Um, so he writes, Elon Musk doesn't protect speech. He monetizes it. The savior of free speech is cracking down on criticism of Israel's genocide, writes Jonathan Cook. Who would have thunk, Care Bear, that that's what's happening? Yeah. So many users of X, I'm not going to call it that. It was always going to be Twitter, uh, seem <laughs> deeply misguided. They imagine that Elon Musk is the savior of free speech. He's not. He is simply the latest pioneer in monetizing speech, which isn't the same thing at all. All the blue ticks on Twitter, mine included, are buying access to an audience, which is why Musk has made it so easy to get a blue tick and why there are now so many of them on the platform. If you don't pay Musk, the algorithms make sure you get minimal reach. You are denied your five seconds of fame. Right? Well, why is he call so, he's calling me a sellout because I have a blue chat? Yep. Um, <laughs> I, me too, man. I pay for two of them. So, <laughs> so they got access to large audiences as a natural right. Uh, Twitter, they got access to large audiences as a natural right, along with politicians and celebrities. They never paid a penny. They felt entitled to those big audiences because they already enjoyed similarly big audiences in the legacy media. They did not see why they should start competing with the rest of us to be heard. The new media system was rigged, as the old media system has been for centuries, to ensure that it was their voices that counted, or rather it was the voices of the ultra-wealthy paying their salaries who counted. Independent journalists, including myself, have been some of the chief beneficiaries of Musk's X, Twitter, but I don't for a minute make the mistake of thinking Musk is really in favor of my free speech or anyone else's compared to his own. Um, so, a reminder that free speech in America is special. We need to do everything possible to preserve it. Boo -boo. Anyway, what was that written? Do you know? Um, what was that written? It was government, global government affairs. Last night, Alejandra de Mores threatened our legal representative in Brazil with arrest if we did not comply with his censorship order. This has to do with like Rumble and stuff. Not sure. Twitter specifically got threatened um, in Brazil. Um, but. Being able to buy yourself an audience isn't what most people understand as free speech. Musk's Twitter is simply the latest innovation on the traditional free speech model from the bad old days. Then, only a handful of very rich men could afford to buy themselves lots of hired hands, known as journalists, on a printing press and be in a position to attract advertisers. Billionaires paid a small fortune to buy the privilege of free speech. As a result, they managed to secure for themselves a very big voice in a highly exclusive market. You and I can now pay a hundred bucks a year and buy ourselves a very, very small voice in a massively overcrowded, cacophonous marketplace of voices. The point <coughs> is, speech on X is still a privilege. It's just one that you can now pay for. And like all privileges, it is on license from the owner. Musk can withdraw that privilege and withdraw it selectively. Whenever he thinks someone or something is harming his interests, whether directly or indirectly, thus his quote, it's not freedom of speech, it's freedom of reach. Right? Right. Um, Musk is already disappearing opinions, either ones he doesn't like or ones he cannot afford to be seen supporting, most visibly anything too critical of Israel. As I said earlier this week, decolonization from the river to the sea and similar euphemisms. Decolonization is a euphemism. I, I your your South African is showing there, you fucking dirtbag. Um, <laughs> necessarily imply genocide. I I don't think we got to imply it anymore, bro. I think the ICC already already figured that one out. Um. 
Clear calls for extreme violence are against our terms of service and will result in suspension. Right? You remember this? Mm -hmm. November 17th? Um, mm -hmm. So, he has threatened users with suspension for repeating slogans such as from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. In other words, for calling for an end to what the judges of the world court recently decreed to be Israel's apartheid rule over Palestinians. It's also against hosting on Twitter the term decolonization in reference to Israel, claiming perversely that it implies a Jewish genocide. Itself, an implicit admission that Israelis, not Jews, have long been colonizing Palestine and ethnically cleansing Palestinians. The Israel lobby is also pushing hard for a ban on the words Zionism and Zionist. It won't be long before Twitter, like Meta, cracks down on these terms too. Keep in mind what Zuckerberg just admitted not that long ago, right? That he censored for the Biden administration. Um, ah. You know, as well as we've talked about specifically how Meta and TikTok and multiple platforms infiltrated by deep state Zionists. So, you know, they got their hands in a lot of pots. But note that banning these words make it all but impossible to discuss the specific historical forces that led to Israel's creation at the expense of the Palestinian people. Analyze the ideology that today underpins Israel's efforts to disappear the Palestinian people or explain how the West has been complicit in Israel's illegal occupation of the Palestinian territory for decades and is currently aiding the genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. The loss of Zionist and Zionism from our lexicon would be a serious handicap for anyone trying to explain some of the major events unfolding in the Middle East at the moment which is precisely why the establishment and Musk are so keen to see such words discredited. Expect to see Musk's Twitter getting a lot more censorious over the next months and years, especially against what he is terming the far left. That is, disparate groups of people he has lumped together who hold opinions either he doesn't like personally or that can damage his business interests. You see, you see who he's retweeting right there? <coughs> Mario mm -hmm. Nafal. Just block that guy. What are you doing? Dude's a psyop. Anyway, um, old Twinter was fundamentally a tool of the far left. From the standpoint of the far left, the platform is far right, but it's actually just centrist. What's the difference between those two things? Far right and centrist? Not much, in my opinion. So... Billionaires aren't there to protect free speech. They got to be billionaires by being very good at making money, by seizing markets, by inflating our appetite for consumption, and by buying politicians to rig the system to protect their empires from competitors. Musk understands that the only people against a world based on rapacious profit and material greed are the far left which is why the far left are in the crosshairs of anyone with power in our rigged system. From the centrist to the right wing, from liberals to conservatives, from blue to red, from Democrats to Republicans. They're the same shit, ain't they? The right and the centrist disagree only on how best to maintain that rapacious, consumption-driven, environmentally destructive status quo, and on how to normalize it to different segments of the public. They are competing wings of a system designed by a single ruling cabal. Musk used to see himself as a liberal, now leans towards the Trumpian right. Trump used to see himself as a Clinton and Clintonian Democrat, but now see himself as, well, fill in the blank according to taste. Remember, kids, labels are bad. The point <laughs> is that centrists are the right are, in essence, interchangeable as should be only too clear from the rapid shift of free speech liberals toward authoritarian censorship and the rapid, pretend, reinvention of conservatives from moralizing guardians of family values to the embattled defenders of free speech. Fucking history repeats that narrative multiple times over. Neither's posturing should be taken at face value. Both are equally authoritarian. When their interests are threatened, by an excess of democracy, their apparent differences are simply the competition for dominance within a system that's been gerrymandered to their mutual benefit. 
We are their dupes buying into their games. The two tribes are there to offer the pretense of a battle of ideas, of competition, of choice at election time, of freedom. They look hostile to each other, but when push comes to shove, they are united in their support for oligarchy and opposition to genuine free speech, to real democracy, to meaningful pluralism, to an open society. Just in, Emmanuel Macron's liberal MP threatens to shut down X in Europe, Colin. Whatever are we going to oh. do if they shut down Twitter? Oh, no. <laughs> the far left are the true enemy of both the centrist and the right. Why? Because they are the only group struggling for a society in which money doesn't buy privilege, where speech isn't something someone can own. That's why when Musk intensifies his crackdown, it will be the far left that's erased so completely you won't notice it's gone. You won't remember it was ever there either. Any any thoughts? None besides how Elon is just to be a bitch. Yep. So yeah. among many in the tech world right now. So, you know, I would love if there were better platforms. I'm sure... I won't be able to get out of this segment without ending Nietzsche's Substack notes, you know, <laughs> as a competitor. Um, you know, go go check him out over there. I'm sure there's links to his stuff in the description. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, we've been playing platform whack a mole for a minute, so until they throw us off, we'll still be there. But you know, um. Definitely look at some alternatives, you know, so mm -hmm. carrier pigeon ships in a, you know, little, little messages and bottles, throw them into the ocean. I don't know something, but, um, <laughs> you know, usually the first thing they do is come for your money and talking about things like this is why we're demonetized. So you scan that QR code on your screen with your camera phone app. Go to co-fee.com slash indie news network or if you're watching this live you can put exclamation mark donate in the chat you know get yourself a little link to kofi leave us a super chat um but if you can't do that you know like subscribe do all the normal engagement stuff that every youtuber asks you to do you know leave a comment do all that stuff or don't i don't i'm not going to tell you what to do you know uh, if I did, we would be a, a lot better off, but you know, like do, do, do what you want. I don't care. Otherwise, you know, thanks for watching. <laughs>